Welcome to day 32, everyone. Uh, February 1st, we're excited to be able to talk to you about today's reading. And today we're in Exodus chapter 8. We're going to look at one of the plagues. So verses 1 through 15 covers just one single plague. It's uh, a plague of frogs. So I'm going to read a few verses and, and then I just have a couple things I want us to talk about. So it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship me. This has been repeated numerous yeah. times. So this is the first time he said, Let my people go. Um, but he says, If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across the entire land. The Nile River will swarm with frogs. They will come up out of the river and into your palace, into your bedroom, and onto your bed. They will enter the houses of your officials and your people. They will even jump into your ovens and your kneading bowls. Frogs will jump on you, your people, and all your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, raise the staff in your hand over all the rivers, canals, ponds of Egypt, and bring up frogs over the land. So Aaron raised his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the whole land. But the magicians were able to do the same thing with their magic. So this is a, that's not the whole text. So it, it, it continues from there, but um, he says frogs will come, they'll come up out of the water. They're going to come in your palace. They're going to come into your bedroom. They're going to get in your bed. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get in your ovens. That wouldn't last long. I wouldn't think <laughs> they're going to get in your kneading bowls. Uh, they're even going to jump on you. Um, I know some people like uh, that are, horrifically afraid of tree frogs, <laughs> specifically yeah. tree frogs, not like regular frogs, tree frogs. And they would, they would die. Like <laughs> literally they would die if this happened. Yeah. Um, this seems like a pretty, uh, frogs are not cuddly animals, right? Not particularly. Yeah. Not <laughs> I haven't known any. <laughs> yeah. Right. This isn't something that you just want to pet or anything. Mm -hmm. like, it seems like a pretty gross, that's how I would describe it, a gross yeah. Um, plague. Is that how you I, see it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking of, of the the filth and the residue they leave behind. And, yeah, yeah. And, and depending on, and we, and we don't know if there was just one type of frog. Right. It could have been a multitude. So you got all these weird sounds and noises, and it just you know, they're inundated. I mean, everything's going to be wrapped up with frogs. Yeah, and I don't I don't mind frogs that much. I think they're fine. But I was even thinking back. We had a a game that we played recently where students had to be blindfolded, put their hands in a box, mm. and figure out what they were touching. And I was going to get a frog from like the swamp area behind the church, <laughs> and. Everyone was saying, you can't do that. There's, they're filled with disease. It's too disgusting, too gross. You can't do that. I didn't think it was that bad, but people, some people just really hate frogs. Yeah, So, but then it says um, he told Aaron to raise his staff for the frogs to come. Okay, so raise your hand over the rivers, canals, and ponds of Egypt and bring up frogs over all the land. So Aaron does this, and the frogs came up and covered the whole land. But the magicians were able to do the same thing. Now, I, there's... I got a couple of questions here. Mm -hmm. um, one is less serious than the other one. So the less serious question is, if the, there's frogs covering the land, why do you want to make more of them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. You know, why didn't they make them go away? But right. that, that yeah. seems to be the, the fact that they could not reverse what God had put in order, but they could add to the misery by their own actions. And I think some practical lessons in that. Sure, yeah. But the, the, the serious question I have is what does this say about supernatural acts? Mm. Because we tend to put a lot of faith, um, I don't know what the right word, credibility into supernatural acts. If God heals something or God does something or something that we can't explain happens, it has to be God, but here, they're able to produce the same supernatural act. What does it say about supernatural acts and our trust in them? Yeah, I think it, it points out the fact that the acts themselves, we can't assume that they are motivated or, or even given by God. Scripture has, has various examples of that uh, where people did, quote, miraculous things. Even all the way in, into Revelation, you know, the Antichrist will have the ability to do supernatural things which people will go, oh, well, we've got to follow him. And so the mere act themselves, you know, when you get into the whole thing about even, quote, faith healers and people put a lot of confidence in people because they think they help facilitate these things. Uh, and so I would say they have to be measured 
uh, other than just by the act themselves. Yeah, I mean, we're told that Satan has power. You know, I think there's even power in like dark things like witchcraft and things like that. But just because something has power does not mean it's worthy of worship. Doesn't mean sure. it should be done. Yeah, and in fact, sometimes it's just the opposite. It, they are done to deceive right. people. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's what I was going to say. Just because of something supernatural happens doesn't mean that's our sign. Yeah, that's right. That we should follow because I think that, in my opinion, one of the when you get to the New Testament, us following Jesus. He says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why he says that is your eyes will deceive you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see something and go, man, that's incredible. That must be a sign from God. When in reality, you know, Satan has performed this, laid this thing out for you to yeah. believe. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and I don't want to, it's not to diminish supernatural acts. It's not to diminish faith and, and God's miracles. That, that's not the point. But we certainly better be aware of what um, Satan is capable of. Mm -hmm. Well, it goes on and says, you know, that it's bad enough. I, I don't. It doesn't say that the magicians made their frogs go away. That's, it doesn't give us that indication. I don't believe. But Pharaoh's it's bad enough. He begs. Mm -hmm. He's like, <laughs> take them away. And um, and and Moses says, well, tell me when you want me to pray. Yeah. The, the, you you liked the 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 translation. I, yeah, the NLT I think is hilarious. How it's like you set the time. It's like a kid, like yeah. you know, like come on, like, bring yeah, it on. Like, don't you bring doing? your mother. You know, <laughs> I, you know, it's, uh, I, just, I just find it so funny. Right. What do you think he said? Tell me when, because he didn't believe he was serious. Hmm. It, I mean, if if he had took him as serious, don't you think he would have prayed right then? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and you would think, having been exposed to this and, and the misery of it all, that you would you would want immediate resolution to it. But isn't that the truth of the way a lot of people, a lot of times we are that way, that we're in a place of misery because we've disobeyed, we've walked away from God, etc. Um, and we're in misery, we've got all kind of pain in our lives. and But for some reason, we tend to wait. You yeah. know, that, and rather than... we seeking immediate relief by doing the right thing it, it's like we almost become comfortable as it were in that condition and and we just wait and because how many times have you looked at people's lives you're like what are they doing why, yeah. why don't they make a decision one it's simple decision would have eliminated yes. all of one them. yeah well in in this case he says when do you want to do it and pharaoh actually answers he says yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. there's a famous sermon. <laughs> That's a, that is yeah, one of the most it, yeah. ridiculous answers in all of Scripture. But there's this famous sermon um, called "One More Night with the Frogs." Mm. Uh, it's years, maybe maybe as much as a hundred years old. Early, you know, um, preachers in America that our tendency is to want to spend one more night with the frogs. Yeah, we want relief. Yeah, we want this problem solved, but. We're going to stay in misery. Yeah, I, I wonder because otherwise it, it makes no sense to me that he would say tomorrow. Um, the only thing I could even think of is perhaps he wanted some time for his magicians, as it were, to try to come up with a solution to their own problem because then he would have come back, I think, to Moses and Aaron with a different perspective and different attitude. He wouldn't have been humble. He wouldn't have been saying, yeah, this is from God. Now, God, uh, we're relying on him to take them away. If they could have figured out a solution to their own problem, and obviously they, they did not. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, you know, it's funny, I didn't even think about that when I read that, you know, do it tomorrow. I didn't think, oh, that's a weird thing. But now hearing it, I'm like, wow, that is, <laughs> yeah. why, why would you do that? Why that would you wait until tomorrow? Why yes. not pray, pray right now? That is Tell me when, well, right, right this second. Maybe, maybe Pharaoh was gonna go back to his wife and say, look, I got this fixed tomorrow, I'm going to take care of this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is here. But so he says, do it tomorrow. And Moses says, all right, um, it will be as you said. Then you will know that there is no one like the Lord our God. He, and he says, the frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials and your people. They will remain only in the Nile River. So apparently the frogs are going to walk out, hop out, whatever, you know, just leave. They're going to leave the palaces. They're going to leave the people alone. And... Um, and so Moses cries out to the Lord, and the Lord did just as Moses um, had predicted. The frogs in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields all died, and they piled them into great heaps, and this terrible stench filled the land. 
so like there's this still this reminder now yeah. and, and that's that's one of the things that I, I, I recognize is our um, even after we get relief from our stubbornness to God there can be reminders left in our life Absolutely. piles of frogs you know yep. up there I remember when I did that or that yep. this baggage yeah the, the, the forgiveness part of sin is is one thing the consequences the remaining are, different thing. are, are entirely mm-hmm. different thing yeah yeah and with all of the I mean with all of the plagues they all have long-lasting effects with like crops being affected or livestock sure. dying or the frogs you know like all of these things that they don't just go even though God the effects of it go away the everything that comes after still stays and lingers on for a while um, not easily forgotten and sin in the, is in many ways the same way while we are forgiven we still are impacted by it and it can affect us for a long time but it says when Pharaoh saw that relief had come he became stubborn mm. Mm. Um, he refused to listen to Moses Aaron just as the Lord predicted so that he, he, he still has reminders yeah. I mean he still got the stink yeah. of the frogs burning in his nostrils but he he began he, he gets stubborn you know and says no and I, I'm just curious because I, I want to we want to kind of finish up with this here. Why does, why does relief make us forgetful? We forget exactly how bad something was. It's why we repeat mistakes, right? Yeah. We become stubborn. Why, why do we become so forgetful once we have relief? Well, it's, it's just our nature. When the pain's gone, uh, the suffering's gone, uh, I know in my own life there have been seasons that I've gone through that were that were difficult or painful as it were and they lasted for a long period of time it was in those seasons that that I grew and developed the most because it was still there and so I I was humble I was seeking God I I wanted to do the right thing Um, you know I was open to input from other people related to the situation and and when relief comes and and I'm convinced that sometimes we seek relief way too soon because we don't ever learn in the process right and um and that's obviously you know it's part of pharaoh's problem here when the problem's gone i'm, I'm about my own business I mean, how many times have we seen people uh, you know show up to church or they'll call they they need or want help they're in a desperate situation and, they get and as soon as the problem solved they're on their merry way again and mm-hmm. you know yeah do you have any yeah i mean i think it's one of those things as, as Christians, like when we're going through difficult times, we're going through trials, it brings us closer to Christ. And a lot of times when things are just going super smoothly, life's going as we as we like, we, we forget God. I think it's easy. I've been in seasons of my life too where things are just going really well. And for me, either financially or just in life, and I forget to stop and thank God for what he's done and forget until things are bad. And then I'm like, oh gosh, I need God in my yeah. life. And so... I think uh, it's one of those things, I don't know if you've heard about the, you know, with the salmon runs, when salmon, they got to go upstream. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if life is going very smooth for a long period of time, it could be a sign that you're going the wrong direction. (laughs) That's that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, today, no matter what you're facing or going through whatever uh, plague you feel like has hit your life, because sometimes we all have those moments, um, relief sooner than later is better. And a good memory keeps us out of the next trouble. Um, if we will listen and understand. So let's close in prayer today, guys. Dear Holy Father, thank you for um, thank you for stories that show us that people thousands of years ago still had the same tendencies we have today. We repeat mistakes over and over again. We're not willing to, to get out and have relief when we when we have the opportunity. Help us, Lord, to um, to seek you and to 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 seek your will for our life and help us to understand that um, when relief does come, there should be lessons learned and wisdom gained so that we don't continuously repeat that and don't allow our hearts to be hardened, don't allow us to become stubborn so that we continually repeat over and over again the things that cause us difficulty and hurt our families and hurt those that are around us. May we uh, be diligent to follow after you every single day. Thank you for joining us today for the One Single Story Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you can get this every single day. 
To stay up to date with everything that is going on with One Single Story, visit onesinglestory.com for all of the resources that we have available. We look forward to you joining us again tomorrow.